This video is about making nickel hydrazine nitrate, better known as NHN. Some info, NHN is considered to be a true non-primary explosive detonator or known as an NPAD and it really does fall between a primary and a secondary explosive. Its first known synthesis was done in 1958 by corporation A.D. Little Incorporated. No specific person was mentioned in the literature. After that, it was studied extensively by NASA in the 60s and 70s as a potential rocket propellant, believe it or not. After all, it does have hydrazine in it. It's rather fast. Its speed of detonation is 7,000 meters per second. And I drew out a structure here, simplified the nickel atom is in the center here, surrounded by six NH2s. And then that has a plus two charge. It's the cation and it's bonded to two anions here, which have a negative one charge. So they balance off. The anion, of course, is the nitrate component with a nitrogen double bonded to an oxygen there and single bonded to two oxygens here, which of course is NO3. I mentioned that it falls between a primary and a secondary explosive. So I wanna show you some of the sensitivities here of uh, different explosives. That N stands for Newtons and it's the amount of pressure needed to make them explode. So here we have mercury fulminate, which is a primary at five Newtons. Tetrazine, also a primary at eight Newtons. Then you get to PETN with 60 Newtons and RDX at 120 and NHN falls in between all of these at 16. So you have two primaries, two secondaries, and it's right in the middle at 16. It is an unusual compound in that way, but that's what it is. It has a rather low ignition temperature at between 160 and 180 degrees Celsius, which is 320 to 356 degrees Fahrenheit, which is lower than it takes to light a piece of paper. When it detonates, it releases gases, N2, H2O gas, which is basically steam, NOx, which is a variety of nitrogen oxide components, hydrogen gas, and the one solid that is released is nickel oxide. As the oxygens of the nitrate component here are the oxidizers, it would make sense that the hydrazine portion acts as the reducing agent. And the last thing is that the brisance of NHN is very high. Brisance is its ability to shatter things, and due to the speed at which it detonates, it does have a high one. In our materials, and I'm not going to make much of this for obvious reasons, everything I make I am going to either use up or destroy, we need hydrazine sulfate, 4 grams, dissolved in 40 milliliters of water. We need sodium hydroxide, 2.16 grams, dissolved in 6 milliliters of water. And we need nickel nitrate, 2.96 grams, dissolved in 12 milliliters of water. And of course, we need water. So the hydrazine sulfate and the nickel nitrate were both things I made in previous videos relatively recently. So you can look back on those to see how those were done. The reactions here, there's only a couple that are really important. So we have our hydrazine sulfate right here, N2H6SO4, and we're going to mix it with some sodium hydroxide to NaOH, which will yield free hydrazine. That's the most important thing we're looking for here. It will also yield sodium sulfate and a couple of waters. And then in the last step of the experiment, we're going to take our nickel nitrate, which of course is dissolved in water. We're going to mix it with the free, the free hydrazine we just made up here, and we'll end up with nickel hydrazine nitrate, our end product. On to our methods here. And usually I like to draw things out for those that learn more visually, but I didn't have nearly enough room to do it. So we're going to go through this numerically here. Number one, dissolve sodium hydroxide in water, six milliliters. Number two, dissolve the nickel nitrate, which is nickel nitrate hexahydrate in water, 12 milliliters. Number three, we're going to add our water to our hydrazine sulfate in a 100 milliliter beaker, which it will not dissolve in very well at all at room temperature. So we're going to heat it to 60 to 70 degrees Celsius until the hydrazine sulfate dissolves. And I found, I've done this several times with different experiments, it does dissolve right around 65 degrees Celsius, right between there, uh, without fail. So you can't go much above 70 degrees Celsius because it'll start to break down the hydrazine uh, sulfate. But if you are careful and keep it right here, you will dissolve that hydrazine sulfate in water. Number four, we're going to add the sodium hydroxide solution that we already made to the hydrazine sulfate solution. This will create the free hydrazine, and you want to mix it well to make sure you get all the hydrazine you can out of this. Then you're going to allow that beaker to return to room temperature. Before, number five, you place that beaker in a freezer, which will precipitate the sodium sulfate. I found this happens right around you know, three, three and a half degrees Celsius without fail. So as long as you watch, the caref watch it carefully, you can put it in a freezer. If you leave it in there too long, the whole thing will turn into ice, of course. But as long as you monitor it, right around three degrees Celsius, you should get your precipitate of sodium sulfate, which you then can vacuum filter safely to obtain a solution of free hydrazine. To this free hydrazine solution, you then add the nickel nitrate solution you already made, and the NHN will form right then and there. Usually it's a pink to purple uh, color, 
and you want to continue mixing this for several minutes at least to make sure all of the uh, nickel nitrate and the um, free hydrazine get a chance to mix into NHN. And lastly, you can then gravity filter this. You don't want to vacuum filter it. Dry it up. And finally, the fun part, test it. And I have absolutely no whiteboard left right here. So let's go ahead and make our nickel hydrazine nitrate, or I'd keep talking about stuff. Four grams of hydrazine sulfate made in a previous video, pre-weighed. 2.16 grams of sodium hydroxide, which I've never made, pre-weighed. 2.96 grams of nickel nitrate hexahydrate made in a previous video, pre-weighed. Distilled water being held in a plastic bottle, or it would be like pouring everywhere to be used in varied amounts throughout the experiment. The first step I'm gonna do is to hydrate both the sodium hydroxide and the nickel nitrate so they're ready to go later. So in this uh, beaker right here, we have 2.16 grams of sodium hydroxide, and I'm gonna to add to that the six milliliters of water. Sodium hydroxide is extremely soluble, so even though this is a small amount of water, it will dissolve in it. Well, that took less than two minutes to dissolve. You can see it's exothermic by the amount of steam that's coming off of it, but that won't matter once it cools down, of course. Next, we have the 2.96 grams of nickel nitrate hexahydrate. And to that, I'll be adding the 12 milliliters of water. Once again, that should dissolve rather easily. That also dissolved very quickly, in less than about four minutes. So next up is going to be the hydrazine sulfate. I have the hydrazine sulfate there in the 40 milliliters of water. This will be different because hydrazine sulfate does not dissolve in water well unless it's heated. And I've done this several times and it's always dissolved between 60 and 70 degrees Celsius. You don't want to go much above 70 degrees because the hydrazine then starts to break down into nitrogen and ammonia. So I'm going to add the 40 milliliters of water here. I'm going to turn up the heat and I do have a thermometer. I'll be checking this periodically to maintain the correct temperature until everything is dissolved. I'm going to turn on the magnetic stirrer and the heat now, and I will be checking the thermometer here, which I can give you a current temperature of around 18 degrees Celsius, which you'd expect around room temperature. Okay, be back when it's done. I just checked it. It's at 65 degrees Celsius and everything has dissolved. I'm going to add the sodium hydroxide, but I don't want to add it too cold because it will bring the hydrazine right out of solution again. So I'm just going to leave it there for a second to heat up and then we'll add it right away. It's only been a couple minutes, but I'm going to now add the sodium hydroxide to the hot hydrazine sulfate, which will give us our free hydrazine and sodium sulfate. Let that stir for a second. Then I'm going to turn the heat down here, which I know you can't see, but I'm turning it all the way down. Now you want this to go to room temperature before it goes into the freezer. So that will take a minute and I'm just going to, of course, not wait here and time lapse set because it'll take a long time but all right turn off the magnetic stir and just so you can see oh, this is pretty hot it's completely clear okay because there's now free hydrazine in here i put saran wrap on top of it so none of it escapes and i will keep it this way when i chill it the temperature of the solution is now dropped back to 18 degrees celsius you can see some sodium sulfate has precipitated out some of those are tiny bubbles too we'll find that most of the sodium sulfate does precipitate out at around three degrees Celsius. At least that's my uh, personal experience, but I'm gonna put it in the freezer, check it with a thermometer. I'm not gonna be videoing that because it'd just be too tedious, but we'll be back when the uh, precipitate of sodium sulfate has been completed. In it goes. It's been an hour, let's check it. I've been periodically checking the temperature Well, there you go. There's the sodium sulfate. We got to filter that. I'm going to check the temperature real quick before we actually filter it. The solution is exactly at three degrees Celsius and you can see the sodium sulfate that's come out of solution there. So I am going to go ahead and filter this. I just have regular coffee filter paper there. That's all you actually need for the sodium sulfate. I'm going to pour it in here, some of it. All of it and we'll start it up. Pretty much stopped dripping. Pull this off. So I'm going to transfer this into a beaker here. Before I do that, I'm just going to pull out the uh, filter paper here, which I actually meant to do a second ago, but just to show you the uh, sodium sulfate in there. I don't know if you can make it out with the camera or not. It's, of course, a whitish powder on 
a white filter paper but there you go that's the sodium sulfate which is actually trash so we can get rid of that just transferring the free hydrazine in water to the speaker I did wipe the inside off of the oil that was in there that I used as a sealant okay that needs to return to room temperature before we add the nickel nitrate solution we're at the final step other than filtering and drying so I'm gonna take off this Saran wrap here. I put a magnetic stir bar in there already, so we'll start that up and speed it up a little bit here. And we're going to now slowly add our nickel nitrate. And you can immediately see the formation of nickel hydrazine nitrate, that nice purplish pink color, which is known as lavender. Let that mix for a bit. It's been about five minutes. I'm going to turn off the magnetic stir. I'm going to get the stir bar out of there before we filter it, but that's the next step. NHN is something you want to gravity filter, so we're going to start that. I double filtered this with two micron filter paper because the powder is extremely fine. It's done dripping through, but you'll notice quite clearly there's a slight bluish tinge to the liquid that dripped through, which means I probably added too much uh, nickel nitrate solution in spite of my best efforts. So I am going to go ahead and wash this. It's probably not going to affect anything in the end, but just to make sure, NHN is extremely insoluble, especially in cold water. This is something that just came out of the freezer. Okay, that's enough. I'm going to let it drip through and then we'll dry. It's done drip drying there. So I'm going to take a small amount of this. It's still rather wet. Of course, you want it that way. So I'm going to take a bit of this and put it on this filter paper right here and allow this to dry separately. And we'll use that to test it. And the rest, I'm going to smear inside this glass dish here, very thin layer. Okay, we're going to let all this air dry, of course. I was able to very, very carefully scrape off most of the NHN here. There's still some on there using plastic tools only. And I put it into the speaker right here. So that's what you see right here. Um, I went extremely slow. I can't impress upon you that how slow I went, I guess. Um, I also had PPE equipment on at the time just to be safe because safety is the most important thing after all. So I'm going to test the NHN by putting it on a little bit onto this filter paper here. I'm going to tape a fuse next to it and we'll light it so I can get far away uh, before it goes off. Um, the blob that I placed in the middle of the one last night did not turn out very good. It was really humid and rainy all night and it sort of uh, spread out and soaked into all of the filter paper and it didn't really accumulate in one spot where I could light it. So unfortunately that's not going to work. But uh, I'm going to get this set up right here and we'll go out and test it. It's all set up. That is about two tenths of a gram. I weighed it. So let's light it. Seven thousand meters a second. Nice. Bad car. Bad car. Bad, 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 bad car. Very bad.